In this video, we're going to look at seeing why the product rule should be true. So we're going to give uh, basically a geometric reason suggesting why the product rule is the way it is. Why does it involve one of the functions untouched multiplied by the derivative of the other and then added to that the opposite happening? Where is this coming from? So in order to do this, I'm going to change notation slightly. I'm going to let u be f of x, and I'm going to let v be g of x. So in this notation, the product rule can be written as uh, uv prime is equal to u times v prime plus v times u prime. And that's the form we're going to prove. So let's have a look. Now I, I said we were going to look at a geometric interpretation of this product rule. So what I'm going to do first is I'm going to start with visualizing the product of u and v. So here's u, I'm imagining it as a length, and here's v. And so they form this rectangle. The, the product of u and v I can think of as the area of this resulting rectangle. Now what derivatives are? They're all about change. So if you change the input, so if I change the x a little bit, how does the output change? And for a small change in x, the derivative is a measure of the ratio of the change in y over the change in x, or the change in output, or the change in input. So let's get that change into our diagram. If I change u by a little bit, so here's u. So if I change x a little bit, then u changes by a little bit. So let's imagine this is our change in u. So it extends it out a little bit here. And what about a change in v? Well, a small change in x results in a small change in v. So imagine it looking something like this. And then I look at the resulting rectangle that occurs with the original length u added by the small change and similarly for v. So I get this extra stuff added on. What's the area of this extra stuff added on? Well, this extra stuff added on can be split up into these three regions. This first one has area u delta v. This other one has area v delta u. And this little tiny one in the corner is delta u delta v. OK, so what does all this mean? It means that if I look at the change in the product, so imagine I change x a little bit, and so u changes and v changes, what's the change in the product? Well, the change in product is this whole purple region. That's how much the product is changed by. It originally was uv, and now it's the area of the whole big rectangle with that purple section added. So let's just write that in. The change in u and v is u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v. Okay, so what is the derivative now? So let's recall, by definition, the derivative of uv is the limit as the h goes to 0, but I'm now going to call that h or that little change in x as it goes to 0. I'm going to call it delta x. So it's as delta x goes to 0, the change in the function over the change in x. So that's our definition of derivative, just written in terms of these deltas rather than the uh, f of x plus h minus f of x over h. So it's the same thing here. It's just uh, now I'm writing the change in the function as delta uv. But we already have an expression for the change in the function. It is u delta v plus v delta u plus delta u delta v. All that's over delta x. Now I can divide delta x into each piece. So that's u delta v over delta x plus v delta u over delta x plus delta u times delta v over delta x. Now it didn't matter on that last one which one I paired the delta x with. I just happened to pair it with the delta v. Now what do we have here? Well we have that the limit is delta x goes to 0. That first term is u times delta v over delta x as delta x goes to 0. That's just the derivative of v. It's exactly the definition of the derivative of v. What about the next piece? Well, that was v times 
delta u over delta x. That's exactly the derivative of u. What about delta u delta v over delta x? Well, as delta x goes to 0, as the change in the input goes to 0, the change in the output has to go to 0. That's that whole f of x plus h minus f of x. As h goes to 0, that numerator goes to 0. So this delta v, or sorry, the delta u is going to 0. What's the delta v over delta x going to? That's going to v prime. It doesn't matter what it went to as long as it existed because now the product is going to 0. And so we're left with u times v prime plus v times u prime. And that's the end of our proof. We've now proven geometrically why the derivative of a product should involve the original functions and the derivatives of the individual pieces. In some sense, from our diagram, it's really saying that the only things that matter when I, when I change x a little bit, it causes a change in u and a change in v. The only things that really matter are how these things are changing here because this one in the corner is so small, it's going to zero. That's that last term, it's going to zero. So as I change x, the change in the product is roughly this red region here. And what is that? That's given by the original function times the change in v plus the original function of v times the change in u. And so that's where we're getting these sort of two pieces coming from. They're coming from those two long rectangles.